The subject of this video is the derivative in calculus. So let's start out by talking about what's meant by the word derivative. You may hear the word derivative used when you're coming out of a movie theater and someone might say something like, that movie was so derivative. Or maybe at a museum, at a sculpture exhibit, someone will say, I find that work to be derivative. Derivative in that usage is an adjective. Adjectives often end in I-V-E, and it means something that has been derived from another thing. You may have noticed, by the way, that the word adjective also ends in I-V-E, but it's not an adjective, it's a noun. There are also nouns that end in I-V-E, but these nouns generally seem to come from adjectives. For example, a captive person describes a person who has been captured. But then the noun can be dropped, and the word captive can be used to describe the whole noun phrase. So some I-V-E words are adjectives, and others are nouns. And the word derivative actually can be listed as a noun also, because the derivative, as used in calculus, describes the function that was derived from a different function. By the way, the word derive is a verb, and we're going to talk about the proper way to use the word derive a little bit later, because people often misuse that. So the title of the video really could be the derivative function. Now, to give you a very broad overview, first we're going to review the concept of differentiation, because in order to compute a derivative, you need to differentiate. There is an earlier video you should watch on differentiation. If you didn't see that video, you should go back and watch it before this one. After we review differentiation, we're going to differentiate an entire function because that's how we obtain the derivative function, by differentiating not a single point, but an entire function. The third thing we'll do is we'll talk about some algebraic examples so you can practice finding derivatives. And the fourth thing we'll do is show the two common algebraic forms for the definition of the derivative. And finally, we'll talk about some terminology and some notation. But this is a little bit too much for one video, so I'm dividing it up into two parts. And this video will just be part one. So let's begin by reviewing differentiation. In a nutshell, we have a function y equals f of x, and we pick a point, let's call that at x equals a, the coordinates of that point, therefore, would be a comma f of a, and we want to compute the slope of the tangent line that goes through the curve at that point. But we can't compute the slope of the tangent line directly because there's only one point. We need two points to define a slope, so we create another point at x equals c, the coordinates being c comma f of c. We construct the line through the red point and the green point, that's the secant line, and we compute the slope of the secant line. We compute that by computing the difference quotient, which we call delta y over delta x, and it's just f of c minus f of a over c minus a. That difference quotient gives us the slope of the secant line. Now to get the slope of the tangent line, we simply take the limit of the difference quotient as c approaches a. So that would be called dy over dx, and it's the limit as c approaches a of f of c minus f of a over c minus a. And that limit gives us the slope of the tangent line. And the process of computing that limit is the process called differentiation. Again, if that seemed too fast, you should go back and rewatch the video on differentiation. So that is all I'm going to say as far as reviewing differentiation. Now let's move on to the second step which is differentiating an entire function to obtain the derivative function. Let's go back to this curve we were just looking at. We have differentiated it at x equals a, and we've computed a slope of a tangent line. That slope, say, that slope looks to be about negative 2. Then we might describe that in words by saying something like, at x equals a, dy over dx is equal to negative 2. Or even better, we might use the evaluation notation. We might say dy over dx evaluated at x equals a is negative 2. And I want to point out that we have differentiated at this location. But if we differentiate somewhere else, like say we differentiate at x equals 0, 
we would get a totally different result, like dy over dx evaluated x equals 0 equals 1. Or we could differentiate here or here or here or here or here. We can differentiate at any point we pick along the curve y equals f of x. And at any different point we pick, we'll get a different tangent line, a different slope of the tangent line. So if we want to find the derivative function, our job is going to be to differentiate everywhere at once. So let's keep track of the values we get when we differentiate at the individual points. I'll draw another set of axes, and in order to record the fact that the slope of this tangent line is 1, I will plot a point at x equals 0 whose y-coordinate is 1. So the y-coordinate of this point is 1 because the slope of the tangent line at 0 is 1. Moving to the right, we have a tangent line that has a smaller slope. We might say the slope of that's a half. So directly below this x value, at the same x value on the other plot, we'll plot another red point whose y-coordinate is a half. Then we move a little further to the right, and at this point we see that our tangent line is horizontal. Well, horizontal lines have a slope of zero. So down below this point, we plot a point with a y-coordinate of zero. And we continue doing that. Uh, here we have a slope of about negative one, then we have a slope of about negative two, then maybe negative two and a half, and then it gets less steep. So we're going back up to negative two, and then maybe negative one, and then here we have another horizontal tangent line. So uh, for the second time, we're going to plot a red dot with y-coordinate zero. And then the lines have positive slope after that, so our red dots are going to go up above the axis. And then we have a steeper slope, and then we start getting less steep. And at the end, we still have a positive slope, but it's getting smaller. So I've just differentiated f at 15 different places and I got 15 numbers. And of course I could differentiate it at all of the points in between those places and I could get an entire curve. A curve that will start out almost horizontal because on the left our function looks like it's a line. It has pretty much the same slope. Then the slope decreases to zero and becomes negative as f of x is a decreasing function. Then it becomes positive again when f of x increases again. And we end with our curve still going up, but going up less and less and less rapidly. So our, our function on the bottom, the derivative function, is going to end with positive values but decreasing. This red curve is the derivative, or the derivative function, of the function f. And so we want to give it a name that corresponds to the name of the function f. And what mathematicians often do is, if they want to pick a letter that corresponds to a different letter, they'll put a prime, they'll attach a prime symbol to the letter. So instead of f, we have f prime and we'll call this function y equals f prime of x. We don't have to call it y equals f prime of x. We could give it a different name like g. Uh, also, prime doesn't always mean the derivative. It's just a way of making two names correspond to each other. But this is a convention that's often used. And before we move on to another example, one final note. If you look at this blue box, you'll notice that everywhere in that region, the function f of x is decreasing. That region describes the exact place where f of x is a decreasing curve. It also is the same place where f prime of x is negative. Functions and their derivatives often correspond in this exact way. Alright, let's look at another example. Here's a function we'll call g. It's just a line. Lines have the same slope everywhere all along the line. So what would the derivative function look like, y equals g prime of x? It would look like a horizontal line, because it has the same value everywhere. And that value is the slope of the function g. Next example, here's a function we'll call h. It's piecewise linear, so it has a small positive slope, big positive slope, and then a negative slope. And its graph might look something like this. 
notice that at the junctions of the pieces where we have corners, the derivative does not exist. H prime, the derivative function, is undefined at those two junction points. We'll talk more about differentiability and non-differentiable points later. And as a last example, here's a function that has a continuously changing derivative. It starts out with negative sloped tangent lines and then ends up with positive sloped tangent lines and the derivative q prime of x might look something like this. If, for example, there were a place on q where the slope was one-fifth, then at that same place on q prime we would have a y value that's equal to one-fifth. And that's it for part one. We've reviewed differentiation and I showed you how differentiating an entire function gives you the derivative function. The rest of this lesson will be in a separate video. But before we stop, we want to have some practice problems so you can really check your understanding of this idea. So practice problems. First, see if you can sketch the derivative of a function whose graph is a semicircle. Second, See if you can sketch the derivative of a logarithm function. It doesn't matter what base, they all have pretty much the same shape. And third, see if you can sketch the derivative of the function y equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, those are your three practice problems. We'll be discussing them in class.